Okay, welcome ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about exponential transformations today. This is the second lesson in our exponentials unit and today we're going to be talking about the effects of the change in the value of a. So we're looking at the function f of x equals a times b to the power of x. We're looking at that number in front. What happens when I change that number in front? Not the base raised to the exponent, which we looked at yesterday, but we're, we're looking at the number in front of that. So our directions on our notes say, use your calculator to create a table of values for the given function. Draw a sketch of the graph and identify its key characteristics. So what you can do is actually, remember anytime you see f of x, it's fancy, fancy schmancy for y. So f of x equals the same thing as y equals. If you ever see y equals, you can plug it into, into your calculator, y equals. And you just plug this in exactly as you see it. Three open parentheses, 0 0.8 close parentheses, raised to the power of x. And let's look at our table of values after you do this. When x is negative 2, what is y? What is f of x? It's 4.7. What about when x is negative 1? It's 3.75. When x is 0, what is y? 3. 2.4 when x is 1, and 1.92 when x is 2. And now we're going to graph these points. I really like to start with my y-intercept, 0, 3, and then I go from there. 1, 2.4 is about right there. 2, 1.92 is about right there. Negative 1, 3.75 is going to be right there. Negative 2, 4.7 is going to be about right there, okay? And this actually looks kind of linear, but if you look at your graph on your screen, you see that it takes on this shape right here. Whoop. That's an exponential function. I know it's an exponential function from my equation because my variable is the exponent. That's exponential. And then it's going to take on this shape. The shape of my graph looks like the shape of an exponential function. So let's talk about its domain. Its domain is, again, all real numbers. Same thing as they all were yesterday. And my range, well, we know that there's an asymptote right here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and write that down where it says asymptote. What is that asymptote? It's our x-axis. What's the equation for it? y equals 0, which means our range is y is greater than 0, not greater than or equal to. And what's my y-intercept? 0, 3. This was different from yesterday. All of the y-intercepts yesterday were 0, 1, and that was a key characteristic of our exponential functions because anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. However, now, if I multiply that 1 times the number in front, that's what I get. Okay, so in this case, the number in front is 3, and 1 times 3 is 3, which is why our y-intercept is 0, 3. So this was a change. What changed? Our y-intercept. So when we added that number in front, that a value, it became our y-intercept. Okay, let's look at number 2. So go ahead and clear your y equals and plug in this function into y equals 4 times 3 to the power of x. And let's fill in our table of values. If you want to pause the video and fill in your table of values and then fill in your graph, I would suggest doing that now. When we look at our table of values, when negative 2 is plugged in for x, I get 0.44 for y, 1.33 when x is negative 1, 4 when I plug in 0 for x, 12 when x is 1, and 36 when x is 2. And again, when I'm graphing, I like to start with my, my y-intercept, where it crosses my y-axis. So 0, 4, and then 1, 12. Well, that's going to be way up here. 2, 36, that's going to be way up there. Okay, let's go to negative 1. Negative 1, 1.33, about right there. Negative 2.44, it's about right there. 
So you can kind of see it curve, but it looks like this. It grows very, very rapidly like this. And then it will get infinitely closer to our x-axis, but it will never touch it or cross it, which makes our x-axis, again, our horizontal asymptote. So what's our domain? All real numbers. Because our asymptote is y, or it's y equals 0, our range is y is greater than 0. So that hasn't changed. Our y-intercept, what's our y-intercept? The y-intercept is when x is 0. 0, 4. Huh. That's definitely different than yesterday. What changed? Our y-intercept. So remember that key point is 0, 1. Because anything, if I think about this, anything raised to the power of 0, so when x is 0, 3 to the power of 0 is 1, but I'm going to multiply it by that a value in front, and 4 times 1 is 4. So that's why our y-intercept is 0, 4. Okay, let's go on to number 3. What do you notice that's different about this function? I have a negative out in front, so what do you think it's going to do to this function? Well, let's take a look. You can plug it into your calculator and fill in your table of values, and then we'll graph it again. When I plug in negative 2 for x, I get negative 1.25. When x is negative 1, I get negative 2.5. When x is 0, negative 5. When x is 1, I get negative 10. When x is 2, I get negative 20. So let's graph these points. Again, I like to start on my y-axis. 0, negative 5. Uh, and let's go this way. 1, negative 10 would be down here. 2, would, negative 20 would be off the graph. So let's go this other way. Negative 1, negative 2.5 is going to be right there. Negative 2, negative 1.25 is going to be right there. And then my graph, if you want to take a look at it on your actual calculator, you can see it takes on this shape, and I'm going to do a terrible job of graphing this, but here we go. Whoop! Oh my gosh, that was terrible. Okay, so let's see if I can make this prettier. I think I'm just making it worse, but okay, there we go. There's our shape, and it's going to approach this x-axis, but again, it's never, ever, ever going to touch it or cross it, which means that x-axis is still my asymptote, okay, my horizontal asymptote, which is y equals zero. Let's go ahead and write that down, okay. So what's our domain? Has it changed? Remember, your domain is your set of x values. Has it changed? The set of x values has not changed. It's still, it's still all real numbers. But our range isn't y is greater than zero. What is it? It's y is less than zero. It's down here. Okay, all of those y values are where y is less than 0. Okay, so what's our y-intercept? 0, negative 5. And what changed? When I plugged in this negative 5 out in front, my range changed from y is greater than 0 to y is less than 0, and my y-intercept changed. So our y-intercept changed and our range changed. Notice on examples one and two, only the y-intercept changed. And those were positive values of a. But on this example, I have a negative value, a negative value of a, and my range also changed. Okay, let's move on to number four. Are you catching on? Kind of seeing some patterns? Number four, you can take a moment to plug this into y equals into your calculator, look at your table of values, and fill in your table of values, and then graph it. When negative two is plugged in for x, I get negative 18.75, negative 7.5 when x is one, negative three, huh, hmm, who could have guessed it? Negative three out in front, that ends up being my y-intercept, hmm. When x is 1, y is negative 1.2. When x is 2, y is negative 0.48. So let's see. Y'all know I like to start with my y-intercept, 0, negative 3. Um, and then I'm, I'll, I'll fill in when x is 1. When x is 1, y is negative 1.2. 
When x is 2, y is negative 0.48. That's about right there. When x is negative 1, it's negative 7.5. And then when x is negative 2, it's off the chart. So it's going to look like this. Whoop, whoop. And get infinitely closer to that x-axis, but never, ever, ever touch it, which again makes our horizontal asymptote y equals 0. That's the same. That has not changed in any example that we've done thus far in lesson 1 or lesson 2. So what's our domain? Still all real numbers. Range, however, is not y is greater than 0. It's y is less than 0. All the y values that are greater than 0 are up here. And our graph isn't up there. All the y values that are less than 0 are down here. That's where our graph is, which is why our range is y is less than 0. What's our y-intercept? 0, negative 3. So what changed? Again, in this example, our range changed and our y-intercept changed. Same as the previous example. And again, in these last two examples, I have a negative value of a. So let's do a quick recap. What happens when a becomes negative? Well, what happens? The graph reflects or flips across the x-axis. Let's write that down. The graph reflects, and that's just a flip, right? The graph reflects or flips across the x-axis. So if it flips across the x-axis, what happens? Do our x values change or do our y values change? All the y values became negative, okay? They become negative or opposite of what they were. So how does this affect the range of the function? Does it affect the domain? Does it affect the horizontal asymptote? Well, the range changes from y is greater than 0 to y is less than 0. Right? So when that a value was negative, our range is what was affected. It doesn't affect the domain nor the horizontal asymptote. Okay, and last question. What happens to the y-intercept when the value of a changes? What happens to the y-intercept? A is the y-intercept. Okay, if I have that a number in front of b to the power of x, then it's like when I plug in 0 for x, well, anything raised to the power of zero is one, so I'm just multiplying one times that number in front, which means when I plug in zero for the value of x, a is my value of y. And this concludes your notes for your second lesson over exponential functions, which are exponential transformations, effects of change in the value of a.